Well, hello everyone. Um, this is our uh, C program. It is an island simulator. Uh, these are the participants. It is uh, Francisco, Hector, Hi. and me. Uh, right now, we're going to have a, a quick presentation about uh, this project, and then we're going to have a demo, and then we're going we're gonna to have a, an architecture explaining, and then we're going to have a demo. So, first of all, uh, welcome to the Island Raining Ball Simulator. Uh, this is a C program that tries to implement uh, the P threads in order to create a simulation in which we have uh, balls raining down in the island. And the way we represent the island is with a matrix. Uh, it has different colors. And depending on the color is uh, the height that you're in. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have uh, blue, cyan, green, yellow, uh, magenta, and these represent uh, the height. And also, talking about the positions of the balls, uh, we also have a matrix where we keep track of the ball behavior, and this is where we uh, put all the information that is related to the balls in which spaces of the island um, they fall. And this is, this is it right now for the quick presentation. Right now we're gonna go with the architecture uh, with my partner, Francisco. All right, so for the architecture, as you can see right here, it's, it's just like uh, my friend uh, Daniel Lepp explained. It's a project that uses speed threads to, use, uh, to simulate the behavior of balls uh, running down the ice line as, as if they were ray. And they, here are the general points, the map, but also the colors represent the height. And then with the same colors, we base ourselves for the position of the balls, which will be represented with IDs. That's the uh, whole point of this matrix to show the, as we are gonna see in the demo later on, how, how it works. So to explain a little bit about the architecture, we have uh, the raining baseballs, which one, each one of them will be represented as a thread. And each thread is gonna have information like the position, and the ID and the thread ID for finishing the thread. After that, we can see this is the ball's behavior. It, it tries to get the, the best way to go, which means with gravity is the lowest point around yourself. Is If it is uh, actually lower or the same height, then you can try to move to that place. If not, uh, the ball is gonna be registered as stuck and it's gonna finish. And it will be registered as stuck in the, as trapped in the island. But if not, if it can move to a lower height around it, then it, it's gonna try to move to that position and it's gonna say, is there another ball in that position currently? If, it, it's a, if the answer is yes, it's gonna bounce. Uh, and so both the ball who just crashed and the ball that received the hit are both gonna move in two random directions and are gonna try to move again to those directions. No matter if the height is higher, they are just gonna move until they can find a position that is not taken. Once it is, it is not taken, it's gonna move and change the speed if it's the case that it went to a lower height, just like with gravity. At the end, if it landed in water, uh, which means the zeros of the ocean right here around the place, it's gonna register that and it's gonna finish. If not, it's gonna slip, uh, the slip amount, it depends on the slip, and it's gonna try to uh, try again to move. And the final results of it, it was trapped or in the sea are going to be recorded. Now we're gonna quickly see the code, basically just the, the arrays that represent the Iceland and the positions. And basically one of the most challenging things we had to do was because we manage a recursion with the collision or, and, and the try moving, we, we have to think about what happens sometimes with results that we will say what's currently happen, happening right now with the, with the program because 
it's not gonna sometimes uh, keep an error, but with recursion and threads uh, at the whole same time, sometimes it's too fast and you don't know what's happening. So for fixing bugs, we had to analyze it step by step and debug all the, the whole application. That was one of the biggest challenges to fix issues. And then we can see there's the threads uh, for the bulk behavior that is called. And yeah, this is by my part now. Our teammate actor is going to explain how, how it runs and what is happening. OK, so here we're going to have a little demo. And here we just call the program island with 40 volts. And here we can see how it starts behaving. Uh, we can see the map and the results. Uh, for example, here we can see that the ball number 8 landed on column 2, row 2. And it's uh, keep, keep on moving. Here, ball 33 moves from position 43 on level 3 to position 33 on level 2. And its speed uh, went faster from 1,000 milliseconds to 900 milliseconds. Uh, for example, let me see if we here see a collision where ball 2 collided with ball 6 in position 32. Then, ball 6 moved uh, from level 1 to uh, level 2. And the ball two moved from four one to level three, and its speed stayed the same as it was on the same level. Um, now, here we can see that there was just only ball thirty three left, and as we can see, it got stuck at it was on level one, which is represented by the cyan color. And all around him, there were uh, higher levels. At the end of the program we see that the balls that went trapped were trapped were three. Balls that landed in the North Sea were 10, on the South Sea 13, on the East Sea 6, and on the West Sea 8. If we add every value, we can see that they are the 40 balls we entered. And, and uh, for my conclusions, I learned to use bithreads and how to use multithreading in something that is more than just homeworks. And I really enjoyed implementing them and modeling the vault behavior. For me, it was a really good experience using threads not only in this small project, but something bigger than thin lights and experience with the threads communications and shared variables and all of that stuff, it was really good learning for me. And for me, I can say that it was this was a really cool project that I could see how the stuff from class can be applied into a real life situation and how we can simulate simple stuff like an island and maybe think of it as a video game. I mean, it is a fun way to understand uh, the P-threads and how to manage them. And also we had uh, a really good experience uh, trying to uh, keep track of all the threads and all the information that is important and so that we don't uh, lose anything and this was a really cool project and well thank you this was our presentation uh, we hope you enjoyed it and thanks teacher